thank you for the intro on the education. Uh, I would like to go back to Napoleon, when Napoleon declared that there was not only a right to be educated, but an obligation to be educated. He didn't have the teachers, he didn't even have the textbooks. And so they developed uh, l'école mutuelle. And so the mutualism was an extraordinary development uh, at, uh, during the revolution. Of course, it created people like Proudhon and others, which were not very appreciated afterwards. So uh, uh, the French system, of course, went against l'école mutualiste. But you may know that uh, in the Soviet, in, in, in Russia today, uh, that schooling system is uh, very much taken up in combination with uh, martial arts and music. Um, so if any of you would like to see very creative, innovative schools in Russia um, where the new generation is going to, it's all about knowing mathematics, knowing martial arts, and knowing music. And, uh, there is, uh, and it's all done in forests. So I think we see a few very interesting initiatives uh, around the world on education. I am always shocked uh, when I look at education is that indeed it seems to be a great investment opportunity because whenever there is a country that liberates, that uh, uh, permits uh, private initiative, you immediately within years have a couple billionaires who make so much money on the education that it doesn't make sense. But we're, we're here going to be in our session with a bit more down-to-earth uh, types of uh, investments. Um, I, I very much like to Olivier, uh, I would have liked Olivier to, to, to do that introduction before we start here because you gave the exact pitch that we require. Um, and, and you know, one of, the, one of the incredible things is that so often we see investment opportunities that are just self-evident, you know, and they're self-evident. And somehow, um, most of these entrepreneurs are still forced to put their logic and their passion into a discounted cash flow analysis with Excel spreadsheets. You, you should know that in my organization, we never do a project on the basis of a discounted cash flow analysis, and we never do an Excel spreadsheet. We, in my organization, we prohibit the use of Excel spreadsheets <laughs> because it is cheating with yourself permanently, and, and we don't need that. So, so we don't... We're not against Microsoft, we're just against uh, <laughs> the, the use of Excel spreadsheets, which is a pure cheat um, on everyone who uses it, particularly yourself. Um, and therefore, I would like uh, us to, to look at three cases, three very concrete cases of, of how we would like and how we, we, we undertake um, joint initiatives. Um, it is no secret that when you meet with uh, I mean, for many of us, when you meet for the first time with uh, Suat, uh, you know, you, you become a fan of Li-Fi. I, mean, I mean, he has a way of explaining this that you, you wonder that, you know, wh why, why can't we just all start doing that? And so I would like him to present his logic, what he's doing, and then I would like, you to, I would like to give you my source my interpretation of how do you get going with these businesses? Because let's be fair, we're going against Qualcomm, we're going against Cisco, we're going against, I mean, we're going against a few who are pretty powerful. Um, and, and I think this is very important to realize. It's not about can we finance this, it's about how can we develop the strategy of David versus Goliath so that you can indeed know, according to the Bible, that Goliath will win, will lose. I mean, this is the key, because financing is in order, is a tool, is not an objective, but in the end, what we would like to see is that this transformation of the economy happens. And it's very obvious when you learn about the Li-Fi and the technologies around it and the opportunities around it that this will be funded. But funding is not enough. You need to have the strategy to gain your place on the market as David did against Goliath. So that's you want to do it in French or in English? In French, but the name is not in English. I can't hear you. It's okay? 
No, no, the, the only issue is that uh, I didn't plan to talk about Li-Fi, but uh, about another project. No, 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 no. Ah, okay. that's not important. Uh, I will come to Li-Fi. Okay, so, but, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> this is the exact case. You provide the context, <laughs> and within the context, you have a proposal. Yeah. So, just for this part, I will do it in, in French, because it will be easier and more efficient, but for the debate, we can continue in, in, in English after. So, um, can, uh, When I, when I read that that expression of Einstein, who said, "For to solve a problem, we cannot use the same way of thinking as when we have created the problem." So we have to think differently. That's what Günther calls "think new," which he presented yesterday. And that's true. If we continue to adopt the same logic, we will create the same problems. So we need a rupture. Et euh, grâce à Günther, j'ai rencontré Marco à Munich il y a un bout de temps déjà. On était dans un très bon restaurant et, et Marco est arrivé avec sa tablette et au moment du dessert pour nous montrer euh, tous les déchets qu'il y avait euh, sur la mer. <rire> et il m'a expliqué que voilà, il avait une machine et que et qu'il avait besoin, euh, je ne sais plus combien, pour euh, lancer sa machine. Et il se trouve que quelques jours avant. J'avais assisté à, à une présentation à Paris de cette société, Le Bon Coin, je ne sais pas qui connaît. C'est une entreprise, un site web qui met simplement en relation des, des acheteurs et des vendeurs. Vous pouvez revendre les produits que vous avez à la maison, que vous n'utilisez plus. Et de l'autre côté, il y a des gens, ils achètent en seconde main parce que c'est moins cher. Et c'est gratuit, aussi bien pour l'acheteur que pour le vendeur. C'est très bien parce que ça permet de réduire son empreinte carbone. Bon, c'est très vertueux comme site. Et vous pouvez voir les chiffres ici. Très forte croissance, rentable au bout de deux ans. Et vous pouvez voir les taux de croissance. C'est une société qui aujourd'hui fait, euh, en 2017, 257 millions d'euros et 110 millions d'euros de, de bénéfices tous les ans. Et... Euh, quand euh, Marco m'a dit qu'il avait besoin de quelques millions pour pouvoir lancer ses machines, je me suis dit dans ma tête, je me rappelle, on était à l'hôtel, j'ai mal dormi, je me suis dit, il y a un, quand même un problème. D'un côté, on a des sommes énormes, et de l'autre côté, on a euh, des entrepreneurs aussi, parce que même quand on est à la tête d'une fondation, on reste un entrepreneur, qui euh, finalement sont dépendants des donations. Et euh, la réflexion que je me suis faite, c'est ce que je disais hier, c'est que l'innovation crée en fait des inégalités et ne les comble pas pour une simple et unique raison, c'est que les fruits de l'innovation sont concentrés dans quelques sociétés et donc quelques actionnaires. C'était un peu la discussion, la présentation de ce matin. Et je me suis posé la question, mais pourquoi au final, euh, les associations, fondations doivent-elles être dépendante des donations et, et pourquoi elle ne profiterait pas, elle non plus, euh, des revenus directement, des, des, des fruits de, de l'innovation. Et donc, j'ai lancé, on a commencé à, à travailler avec Marco, on a commencé à réfléchir. Donc ça, c'est le bon coin, hein, vous voyez, vous pouvez acheter une voiture, un placard, des cartes, des roues, tout ce que vous voulez. Tout, voilà. Et donc, j'ai lancé un site, une entreprise s'appelle quasi neuf, le site n'est pas opérationnel encore. Et j'ai refait la même chose. En gros, bah, vous pouvez vendre des produits. Et j'ai ajouté euh, quelques fonctionnalités qui sont que bah, vous pouvez vendre un produit, mais vous pouvez décider d'en reverser une partie de la vente de ce produit à une association que vous voyez sur la gauche. Mais là, on est encore sur le système de la donation. Et je me suis posé la question de savoir comment le Bon Coin faisait ses revenus. 70% des revenus de de le bon coin viennent de la pub en online. Euh, Aujourd'hui, le marché de la pub online, c'est 4 milliards de, de chiffres de, de dépenses en France, 20 milliards au niveau européen. 80% de ces 20 milliards sont absorbés par deux entreprises, Facebook et Google. Alors, quand je vous parle de concentration, c'est exactement le schéma. Et le bon coin, on prend donc en gros 270 millions, ce qui n'est pas grand chose. Et donc, je me suis dit, bah, on va utiliser cette pub, cet argent, et euh, le rediriger. Alors, j'ai mis, comme vous pouvez le voir ici, de la pub. Donc, comment ça marche 
les utilisateurs, à chaque fois qu'ils cliquent sur la petite bannière en bas, le coût que ça rapporte à la société, donc le bon coin ou ici Casino, c'est entre 10 centimes et 1 euro. Chaque clic, en fait, rapporte entre 10 centimes et 1 euro. Le bon coin, c'est 28 millions de visiteurs uniques. C'est une vingtaine de milliards de pages web consultées chaque mois. Donc, vous faites un ratio et ben vous comprenez d'où vient à peu près ces 110 millions. Donc, Casinoff, on a commencé à le développer. On va le lancer probablement l'année la, prochaine. Et le schéma, il est très clair. C'est de dire, il faut penser, je reprends l'expression de, de Günther, think new. Vous avez le modèle classique en haut. Vous avez... Euh, voilà, le bon coin, c'est son chiffre d'affaires, évidemment il y a de la marge nette et tout ça va justement dans les euh, poches de fonds d'investissement ou de shareholders. Business as usual, ça se fait quand même très souvent au détriment euh, de la planète, très souvent, pas tout le temps, il ne faut pas non plus aller dans, dans l'extrême. L'idée de Casineuf, bah, c'est tout simplement que cette marge nette va aller dans, directement euh, dans, pour financer des projets au niveau des fondations et autres. Alors je vous laisse simplement extrapoler, on parle de sommes qui sont quand même faibles, on a parlé de 30 euros pour, je ne sais plus, nourrir une famille et des enfants. Là on a globalement, ou financer, parce que c'est le thème de truc, financer des projets de la Blue Economy. En contrepartie, en fait, les utilisateurs qui aujourd'hui sont euh, sur le bon coin, mais qui sont dans euh, ces euh, fondations ou associations, passent, de Le Bon Coin à Casineuf. Donc c'est très simple, je n'ai pas entre guillemets de frais marketing, c'est juste un changement. Et ça, c'est une vraie spécificité des technologies web, c'est qu'il n'y a pas de loyauté, en fait, il n'y a pas de fidélité. Aujourd'hui, Le Bon Coin est tout seul, bah, il aspire tout. Euh, regardez Facebook, tout le monde a peur, parce qu'il n'y a pas une fidélisation comme il y a, par exemple, sur, chez Apple, parce que vous avez du matériel, vous êtes attaché au côté matériel. Sur les technologies web, aucune fidélité. Vous pouvez passer d'une plateforme à l'autre du jour au lendemain. Quand on dit que ce sont des géants au pied d'argile, c'est un peu ça. Si vous faites aussi bien qu'eux, avec un petit truc en plus, les gens vont basculer de l'un à l'autre. Et donc là, l'idée, c'est vraiment euh, d'associer finalement euh, les fondations et associations de manière à ce qu'il euh, 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 y ait une, un transfert de valeur, justement, disons, des technologies web, des entreprises web, vers... Euh, des entreprises web qui partagent les revenus. Voilà. Alors aujourd'hui, c'est très simple, puisque le seul shareholder sur Casineuf, c'est moi. Donc, je n'ai pas beaucoup de shareholders à convaincre. <rire> Et donc là, par contre, on arrive sur un système qui est plus vertueux, parce que justement, tout cet argent peut être utilisé pour développer des actions comme la Blue Economy et autres. Et juste pour terminer, euh, moi, c'est bon, on en a, j'en ai parlé la dernière fois. C'est vraiment ce qui, disons, m'inquiète un peu le plus, c'est que une technologie, on en fait ce qu'on en veut, euh, et compte tenu de, disons que aujourd'hui, le système évolue avec quelques points focus. Il faut tout le temps optimiser. C'est toujours comme ça quand vous avez un système, il choisit quelques points sur lesquels il va essayer d'optimiser euh, le fonctionnement du système. Et aujourd'hui, dans le modèle économique point d'optimisation, bah c'est simplement ce qu'on a discuté ce matin, euh, les rendements. Voilà. Et, et donc, si ça doit se faire au détriment euh, d'un bon usage d'une technologie, bah ça se fera. Et, et je pense qu'il faut qu'on garde en tête que euh, l'innovation, c'est ce que j'ai écrit là, doit vraiment servir à porter l'humanité vers quelque chose euh, qui nous fait avancer. Et évidemment, en respect avec la nature. Sinon, ça ne fera ce que j'ai écrit à la fin, qu'assombrir et, et noircir le futur, comme on peut le voir dans les films de science-fiction euh, un peu catastrophiques. Voilà. Bon, je reste assez confiant, surtout quand on a des actions comme les gens euh, qu'on a vus ici. Donc je reste assez confiant qu'on peut encore euh, faire, disons... Alors, Swat, euh, oui. de quoi est-ce que tu as besoin Pour. What do you need Pour ça Ah oui, pour euh, mettre, mettre en route, pour ah, rien. réaliser. Rien. On a déjà commencé à mettre en place. Marco finance le euh, développement du site web. On n'a pas besoin de grand-chose. C'est la pub qui financera le reste. Ok, ça va. Vous prenez note <rire> <rire> Je crois que c'est très important. Un, c'est lors d'une réunion, un dîner. On a décidé de le faire. Est-ce que vous avez des plans stratégiques Non. Est-ce que vous avez fait des analyses avec Excel Spreadsheet <rire> euh, Je déteste Excel. 
Ah, ouais, ouais, on, nous sommes à deux, on sait bien. Mais, mais, mais vous voyez, c'est ça. Un enfant qui se lève le matin, il ne fait pas quand même un plan pour les jouets. Il ne fait quand même pas une analyse de ce, tous ces dispositifs et tous ces actifs pour prendre une décision à propos du, 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 du jeu qu'il va jouer. Et je crois que c'est ça ce qu'on a tué chez nous. Ce sont les NBA qui ont tué la spontanéité. Henri-Claude Bettigny, je suis désolé qu'il n'est plus là, euh, prof de l'INSEAT, je suis de l'INSEAT, il sait que je m'excuse, mais quand même, on a tué cette créativité des entrepreneurs, on les a forcés dans des corsettes qui sont des plans d'affaires et des plans stratégiques et d'analyse des risques et des audits des technologies. In English. In English. I don't... I can be as passionate in English as in French. <laughs> But, you know, the, 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 the incredible thing is that now, one of my fights is that it really is against the logic of the MBA. It's the most profitable education in the world, is the MBA. Most profitable in the world. Everyone wants to have an MBA so we can increase the unemployment or the average uh, level of a taxi driver. But what I think with this case is so important, but Suat, you did the same with the Li-Fi. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He just got going. And what is important is, in this case, we need users. We need people who just get on the web and use it. And I would like the Zermatt Summit to be there, uh, la petite première plaque tournante, the first little platform for where this starts going. Because we know that even though you're not, most of you are not millenniums, We're a bit above that level in age. But what is very important, we need to trigger this. And what do I would like to propose in this case, there is no money needed to get this going, but we need people who use the platform. And that I think uh, we need to push a button with you. Uh, you know, please, the Zermatt Summit and those who are in the board of the Zermatt Summit, etc. You know, let's get this going and let's just get it doing. And I think that is very important because we do need the first trigger. And that's the same with the Li-Fi. How are we building up the Li-Fi projects around the world? By getting schools to put in the Li-Fi, by hospitals putting in the Li-Fi. So I'm asking you, not for your money to invest. I'm asking you to start getting projects on the ground. Because as soon as you have this portfolio of projects on the ground, Investment follows. The risk analysis is who wants it. And so I would like to say this one is an easy one. Start using it. But the second one with the Li-Fi, I really would like you to think, where can I have this installed in a school, in a hospital? Where can I make this available to the visually impaired? Where can I make this available so we reduce the radio waves, which we know is affecting Uh, the cells of our body. And, and I think we need to transform our thinking from the investor with a return to the one who facilitates the doing on the ground. Because we have the resources, quite a few of us here have the resources, not to influence just their own households. We can influence many. And that is where the difference is. Now, this is one you can do at your home, but let's now shift to if I may, a kite. I mean, who has played with kites in his life? <laughs> I mean, it's in our DNA, isn't it? We love to have this kite flying. And, and I think this is when, again, we need to get things going because as a child, it just is fun to see this flying. And we need not the investor who becomes conscious about sustainability, we need to wake up the child in us. And if you're able to wake up the child in us, you will have a harmony that will be realized quite quickly. And I think what woke up the child in me when I saw this was, of course, my fun on the beach with a kite. And when I see that, you know, I made the big jump from one to two. I, I, who has done that shift as well? I mean, isn't it, isn't it a shift, you know, because doing like this is not the same like doing like this. Now, How many cables do you, how many cords do you connect? We have one. One big one. And then we have two. And then two. The kite. Okay. So. But the kite up there, how many does he have? Four uh, hundred. Four hundred. Wow. I love the laws of physics and I love mathematics. When you go from one to two to four hundred, 
complexity increases. And so when I get into the mindset of, of Stefan and his sky sails, I'm seeing artificial intelligence of a high nature. He's not a kite seller, he is artificial intelligence developer. And I think this is again what we don't need to tell to everyone because it made people a bit scared. Let's stick to the great story of the kite. So can we see some kite flying? Yeah, sure. So perhaps you could do the first video. We see the kite on the beautiful race for water flying and uh, towing the boat um, with eight knots of boat speed with only 40 square meter big kite. And those of you who sail know uh, that 40 square meter of sail is not much and for sure not enough to power a 100 ton boat with eight knots. So uh, we're very effective. Um, and we are so effective because we do what Gunther just said. We are moving the kite all the time. And, uh, <coughs> we're moving it um, so we generate kind of our own storm. We are flying, it, it looks... Uh, like uh, repeat that. We're generating our own storm. Yes. Did you, did you register that? Apparently. Yeah, we're flying with 200 square meters, uh, 200 kilometers per hour up there. It doesn't look like that. It looks a bit slower. Now it's stuck, but um, <laughs> it looks way slower now. <laughs> but it's a very uh, nice picture. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's good to stop there. That's good. No, but uh, actually, Gunther, um, I started uh, this business because when I was a child, I did, I don't know, 400 kites uh, in, in, the, in the basement with the old sewing machine of my grandma because the new electrical ones were not strong enough to do it. And we did it as a child. So, um, and, and when I first put it on a boat, we were sliding backwards through the harbor. Nothing worked. Everybody laughed at us, but it was so much power that we continued. So it was like um, waking up the child. And I'm, I have always been a sailor, so I wanted to bring this power of kites, which is 25 times more than a traditional sail, to boats, to, to industrial cargo vessels, to decarbonize and to help them save fuel. And you would think it's an easy, it's an easy business, it's an easy sale. Yeah, you, you save three, four, five tons of fuel in a day and um, everybody wants it. First of all, everybody laughed at us and made a big fun <coughs> out of us and said, well, it will never work. And if it works, then it will not work well. It's funny because he was, he was not here yesterday and there before, and it's exactly what we spoke about. Uh, With Idris. Exactly. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. And then we developed it. With quite some significant money, uh, 50 million euros of investment have been going in this technology. So it's artificial intelligence. It's, it's, it's uh, highly complex. <laughs> and, and, and can you say where did the money come from? Uh, from private investors. Exactly. It so one of the key things that we're noticing is that when people have the consciousness that Olivier is talking about, then we're talking about a new generation of investors, and we call them legacy investors. So we connect the, the child with the legacy. And, and this is, to me, the new dynamics in financing. Sorry. No, welcome. And then um, we have had it ready, and Lehman crisis hit, so it was a bit tough to be in commercial shipping then because no one had money and all the uh, loans were not renewed and a lot a wave of bankruptcy spread through the industry. Um, then the second wave hit co commercial shipping because uh, they ordered too many ships, so charter, charter rates went down. Um, uh, perhaps you stop that. Uh, I didn't want to show that uh, in, in this moment. And then, um, after all, when shipping recovered a bit, we were told, and this is what uh, I want to refer to what Olivier said earlier, um, we were told, um, yeah, it's a nice technology that you have, but we require 50% interest rate per annum. 50% per annum. Return. Return on investment. That is the threshold when you want to be successful in commercial shipping. They don't care about environment, they don't care about pollution, they don't care about future, they care about money. And that means in two years everything paid back. Yes, that's, that's what they require. And you cannot do that with a sustainable business. It's not viable. And I, I also. Uh, you can do that with that. mushrooms. 
Mushrooms in Ivanka, you yeah, can do okay. that, but yeah, not... So uh, we have mushrooms on <laughs> ships, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so, but, but what do you do? You have a beautiful technology, and then suddenly, after a couple of crises, you find out uh, uh, the market is... Uh, you, you can't meet the expectations of, of uh, the profit margins that in your core market, you, do, you, you go to different markets. Um, and you restarted to um, do some different things. Um, one of those is power generation with kites. And that's quite nice because power generation with kites, meaning digitalization and dematerialization of the wind industry. We're using no towers, we're using no blades. So our machine has a weight of two to three percent of that of a traditional wind turbine. Two to three percent. Can we can we now see this? Now we can see it. Okay. You, you, we can perhaps start the video, and you see um, here a power kite, 50 kilowatts, so a small unit, <coughs> and you see the figure of eight that we are flying. And this figure of eight um, is again creating our own storm. Let's and call it infinity. I like infinity. Figure of infinity. Um, Spiritually, is a bit and better. Perhaps you could switch to the uh, photo. And we did a night shot, and um, in the night shot you can also see then the sign of infinity, where it's uh, very vivid. Mm. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, one, too, one too fast. Um, so this is um, how we uh, how we uh, do the kite, and the beauty of it is that we can have um, constant and steady power. So it's not like solar or wind, where you normally have a lot of time in the year where you don't produce. Here, we're producing 70% of the year, 80% of the year power. So we be become base load ready. Uh, again, base load. Wind energy as base load. And that's the true message here. And it's not coming for a high cost, it's coming for 5 cents per kilowatt hour. Because up there in 400 meters, it's not, it's not magic, it's just... How, how do you go? I, up to 800 meters, and there you have so much wind energy, and it's so steady that it's not a miracle or something very complicated, it's just you go where the wind is. And, the and, energy. and, and what about the birds? Oh, they May I be it. the green guy now, and mm. the birds sit on it and fly with it, or...? We have one nice picture from the Race for Water vessel where a bird is sitting on the rope, while the kite is flying, and it's just... <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that picture. Where is it? Come on. <laughs> I'll sh I show you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have it here. Uh, now, nice I, I want to add something else. As a business person who created companies, we have one nightmare in our business developments, and it's called cash flow. And so what I see this, how long does it take you when you arrive with your container? How long does it take you to fly the kite? Uh, probably uh, six hours. And how long does it take for you to do connection to the grid? Two seconds. Now, now do we know investments of Vestas type uh, towers? I mean, you're spending, when you make a contract to have wind power, it will take you four years to go through the environmental impact studies, to do the site uh, preparations, to do why. And, and this guy, is telling me that with his toy, he's connecting in six hours. Do we understand the cash flow analysis now? Now, here I would like to do a discounted cash flow analysis comparison. How the traditional guys are ready to calculate and say, what's the value of wind power? And then you have this. Andrew, to be fair, it took us four months, not four years, to do the environmental impact analysis for the first two sites. So it's not six hours, that's just putting the machine there. But for four, four months, but in Germany, it's highly regulated, right? So you cannot do a wind project in Germany in four months, but with a kite you can. Ah, so instead of four years, it's four months. That's already Sorry good. That's ten times faster. But I think if I just ask uh, Marco for a quick reflection, Rapa Nui, how many, how many years do you think we need before we can install this? Uh, one, uh, one and a half year, two years maximum. You mean his delivery is slow? Yes. <laughs> good good uh, <laughs> remark. 
So, so we may need some investment for him to get his delivery system going faster. Now, how in business do we get delivery systems going faster? By having a portfolio of buyers, right? So now we're going to go through the practical question. How much does one cost? Um, when you look at a 200 kilowatt machine, which is very nice because it gives you an average of 100 to 150 over the year of uh, average rated power you get out, um, you would be talking a list price of um, 300,000 euros. List price, that means he's ready to negotiate. Yes, <laughs> correct. Um, but you need your project cost to, to put it on that price. Um, the more important figure is what does the kilo, uh, kilowatt hour cost? The OPEX, that the means OPEX. the OPEX. So tell, talk me about OPEX. We want to know that, right? Not, not only OPEX, total cost of energy, yeah. including CAPEX yeah. and OPEX, calculated over 20 years, all in, all maintenance work. All in Your energy. time as well. It's my time as well. It's uh, less than five cents per kilowatt hour. Compare that to a diesel engine um, in Polynesia, it's 20, 25, 30. You remember yesterday I spoke about how much it cost the, uh, the energy today on the Rapa Nui Island. It was 70 cents. He's doing that for five cents. L ladies and gentlemen, this is transformation. <laughs> and what I have proposed to Christopher, I mean, we should have within the 100 people we have around, we should have rather quickly the portfolio of 100 units to sell, to buy. It's not difficult. With those kind of numbers, you can do it on the back of the envelope. And I think this is what is very important. And therefore, I really would like, you know, Zermatt Summit to become this platform where you can take this and say, gee whiz, it's a no-brainer. And when you say it's no-brainer, what's the next step? Just do it. <laughs> because this is the child that says, you know, this is obvious. Now, if we, this morning we had, how much, a three-minute conversation with Anders Wiekman, who's been in the energy sphere for years, and he said, but, he said, Gunther, this guy is transforming the energy business. Wind has base load on every island, and so may I just be naughty, uh, Jean-Luc, we can do that in Mauritius, right? Or in Rodriguez? You have all the wind on the island? To drink? So, so, so what I would like to do is now, if you permit me, or you have another wonderful video to show. Uh, we have one more video, but... Uh, one more video. Perhaps this echo, it's, it's called echo. Uh, it's, I think it's the third, yeah. This, this is a fully automated uh, operation of our 55 kilowatt machine. So you see the launch. Um, and that all fits into the container? In this, uh, it's a trailer. It's a, a trailer with a weight of three tons. Um, and it fits all in there. Now we put it... Uh, 30 square meters? Uh, 40. 40. Like on the race for water, same size. So now um, you see we retract it. It's like a yo-yo. You, you pull out the kite. You Kites and yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then it's landing again. So it's, it's fully automated. Uh, and thing. you remember it's what uh, I explained yesterday. <laughs> Starting from about 100 meters high and uh, going to 800 meters. So, so if you permit me now, I want to make the jump to, to Marco and, and the business model that we need to give shape to for your initiative with Race for Water, and that includes this. Okay, Marco? Yes, with pleasure. I was uh, just uh, thinking uh, before when you, you were uh, explaining the NBA and uh, the way that... Uh, People are uh, thinking uh, with uh, making a business model uh, and so regarding uh, uh, regarding um, Suat, I have got a very good feeling with the guy. I have uh, I feel that the, what uh, the vision with the, the 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 application that you want to do is is good. And uh, I decided yes, I go. Uh, it, also the same with uh, with uh, Sky Sales. Uh, I met uh, 
Uh, Stefan, uh, uh, I went one time in, uh, in Germany. I feel uh, the people. I, uh, I discuss with the engineers. Uh, I, I have got a live uh, demo, if you remember, uh, and, uh, and behind. Uh, I decided also to, uh, to invest on the part on the, for the boat, the, the, what we call the uh, Sky Sales uh, Yacht. And uh, um, yes, we need to, to do some calculations uh, sometimes. It's, uh, it's, uh, but the, what is the most important is the feeling with the technology, is the feeling with the people. I am an entrepreneur since uh, 30 years, something like that. And uh, believe me, mainly it's with my uh, noise, with, with my feeling that I am... You, your heart, thing. your heart, heart as well. Yeah, exactly. In French, we say on sent les choses, le cœur, voilà. Today you have about 15,000 foundation who are uh, uh, at the Swiss uh, register. You have uh, more than 30 billions of capital inside those foundation. 95% uh, of them are just passive foundations. It means uh, they are doing nothing on the, on the, on the ground. They are just uh, trying to help some projects. And uh, they are using the, 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 the part of uh, the interest of the, the of them capital. And when you want to ask them to uh, have uh, found to do uh, on the ground project, you have to fill so many forms. It took you so much energy. And behind you have just uh, one people, a man or a girl. And she's deciding yes or no, I will show that to my uh, board. The board have uh, maybe two or three meetings in the year. And they decide, uh, they are deciding yes, I will do for this uh, or this project or, or, or this one. It's, uh, it doesn't work. Why? Uh, if you are not on the ground, you should go to see the project on the ground to feel with, with the people, to feel uh, what we are uh, really uh, doing and developing. So we have a huge amount of money in Switzerland regarding foundation, but uh, uh, we do just a few with. This is a big issue, a challenge. But, but you, you have a challenge now. Your and boat is me, going around the world. Exactly. Me, I have uh, many, uh, many challenges. The first uh, challenge that I have is uh, this boat is doing what we call an odyssey during five years around the world. We have still four years, in, about four years in front of us. Today, I am not sustainable regarding the opex of the project. So myself, every year, I am putting a lot of money on the table, it means uh, for the foundation to be uh, sustainable. Uh, in terms of, of, uh, of, uh, of OPEX. So uh, I need to have uh, people, uh, brands, uh, donations, sponsors to, uh, to continue to, uh, to, to, uh, to have the chance and the opportunity to continue uh, with a, a, a very strong impact at this Odyssey. Second thing is at each stopover, we have a lot of opportunities uh, coming because we are, uh, we are showing locally a lot of uh, new technologies. So for my team, we are 25 people working for the foundation. Today it's quite impossible to continue to deliver local projects because each time we go, uh, we are visiting a new, uh, a new country, a new city, we have new opportunities. Isn't it nice? I mean, I, I would like to have that problem. I have too much demand for the great technologies that I'm showcasing. And I think this is one of the, again one of the reasons why I wanted uh, Marco to share this, because we need multipliers. 
I mean, how do we get to speed and scale? Not because we're growing bigger ourselves all the time and we have more control ourselves. We create multiplicators. And I think this is really what Marco, the investment that is required in the, in the, to me in the most important uh, for this platform of the Odyssey is that we now have presented to you Rapa Nui and Easter Island, but we're going to visit another couple we have dozen open, islands. Open project in Republica Dominica, in uh, Iquitos, in other uh, countries where we, we went before. So the world is hungry for these projects, wants to have them. The technologies are showcased, and what we're needing to do is really a bunch of entrepreneurs who get their minds with it and say, let's get... I mean, he is actually the deal flow for the investment banker. He didn't realize that. I mean, because he's providing deal flow. He's not providing a project that must be funded, but these are deals one after the other. And what is an investment bank willing to pay for? Not for the deal. Then he takes big commissions. An investment banker loves to have deal flows. He's offering deal flows. And I would like us to think together about this incredible opportunity to create a platform of deal flows. And how do we organize that? And do we have, so we have, need to have a few people who are in finance who know how to organize the deal flows. Because as, and therefore the priority is, as we get Rapa Nui, which is the biggest, the most integrated project, right, Marco? Yes. Um, yes. As that shapes, and we have seen both the policy side and we've seen the technology side and we've seen the financing side, etc., we really have something that can be turned into a deal flow. And my invitation to the audience of Zermatt Summit is, can we pull together two, three people who think in terms of deal flows? I mean, could we? Because that's what he's offering. And it's not about the follow-up of the projects, that's important as well. But we need to always translate in how can now the money flow into these initiatives. And that's deal flow. So the, 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 uh, the idea uh, is... Uh, uh, uh create a, a fund, and we, uh, we spoke about that uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Blue Islas or something like that, transform the islands in uh, sustainable islands. And in parallel, uh, uh, we need uh, also cash OPEX to uh, continue and run uh, the, uh, uh, the Odyssey in a, in a very efficient uh, mode. Uh, and... Uh, so uh, we need uh, your uh, knowledge, we need uh, your network, we, we need uh, uh, the, 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 the opportunities uh, to, uh, to be together and, uh, and uh, be successful together. Uh, and Marco, you, you have a, a, a big brand on there already. Yes, and uh, I, uh, I am very proud to have uh, Breguet. Uh, it's, uh, Swiss watch manufacturer belong to the Hayek Swiss family. watch group, and they, are, they have uh, some courage. You know why? Because we are speaking about waste in the ocean, and I met a lot of brands during those last year, and all they told me, you know, waste, it's not nice. We are uh, selling, uh, we, we need to have... Uh, 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 very uh, exciting and nice pictures and uh, blah blah blah. So you need Federer winning uh, uh, games. Exactly, Federer, or we need to uh, to show uh, nice uh, beaches, uh, uh, nice uh, islands with big uh, li li with nice fish around. I I told them, you know, if we do nothing, uh, we do, we win, uh, you, you never. But again, a nice picture from <laughs> islands for fishes and things like that. Well, you don't even have them today, these pictures. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it starts to be very uh, challenging to get them. Uh, uh, and uh, with uh, Breguem, uh, they, they, they decided uh, to, to, uh, to go uh, with us uh, and fighting against the waste in the ocean. And uh, it's a brand, a very luxurious brand. Uh, We're so going together to visit them. Yes, yes, in one Next week. Friday. Yeah, exactly. If anyone wants to come along and see what a breguet is all about and how to do that, I mean, maybe we can organize that. Okay? But what I think, we, time is up. I yes. see the sign. But uh, 
we are uh, working a little bit like, like a hub. Uh, yeah. Uh, exactly. So I have uh, a proposal. I want to propose. Uh, <laughs> I want to propose that the next Zermatt Summit or the next after I don't know will be uh, on a on a stopover close from the boat. Mm -hmm. So like, we will act like a hub. We will act very close from the boat. We will uh, be in Asia uh, uh, next year. We, uh, uh, in the end of the year. End of the year, exactly. So all we can imagine. Uh, to, it will still be the Zermatt submit, but we do one time on the, on the ground. On exactly. the ocean. <laughs> Take the Matterhorn to the sea. Exactly. And I think it's also good for Zermatt because uh, Zermatt will go one time uh, on the ground also. And, uh, Very we good. Can, uh? We have to conclude. What, what I really wanted to do with this session is to introduce you to a new way of thinking about financing. You know, we have to get out of the, 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 the straitjacket, la corsette, that we have put around finance. And it is not about motivating some to become more interested in sustainable finance. We will not succeed. You have to change the rules of the game. Only when you change the rules of the game, you will be able to access it. I have to admit that for the project that we have been able to do, we've never had difficulties in getting the funding in place. It's not easy sometimes. And sometimes you need the perseverance of someone like Ayumi who, who just keeps at it, right? Because that requires perseverance and continuity. But what I would like to suggest is concretely from this, I would suggest Zermatt Summit does the launch of this website amongst the members and you get about 48 hours to start going. I would like to have uh, at the same time a few of the, you members here in the audience to say, yes, I know the hospital, yes, I know the school, yes, I know... Uh, the project for the visually impaired, we will get a Li-Fi going. I would like some of us to say, my God, wind energy at this price, I will order a unit for our town, our village, our community. It's not difficult. And I was just thinking, because I see someone nodding there, I mean, Glern would be fantastic to have uh, my, the pigs of uh, Karl Ludwig Schweizfurt uh, who are happy with the chickens to also be happy with the wind. Um, you know, we, we just need to spread the word and get things in place. And of course, uh, for, for the proposal of Marco, one of all, first of all, thank you for proposing to have that in there. Um, you will have to convince, uh, mm. of course. It's uh, already done, just it's before. Okay, and we of <laughs> course have to convince Elisabeth that we can put a piano on the boat, because if we don't have a piano on the boat, we... And, and what I think is uh, very important is that we, we, we think in terms of deal flows. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the shift. And, and Ayumi, this is the same for you. What you're proposing with your inlays and these diapers, that requires a deal flow. That needs to be going and going and going. So ladies and gentlemen, we have had the privilege here to have so many young entrepreneurs with a great mind sharing it. Let's secure that we're the hub where things happen. Let me tell you a story. Second, why don't we make it even more concrete? First of all, I offer you to be media partner for your projects. Second, you said about life fee, some hospital or hotel. Why don't we ask this hotel Mm -hmm. Right now, today, and third, tomorrow, I'm going to moderate the Climate Week of Hamburg. I'm going to meet uh, Albert Second from Monaco. Is he already in your project team? No. Is he already supporting Race for Water? Because I could introduce it to him. Yeah. And I also talked to Frank Schweikart, who is in the German Committee for Plastic Waste. I'm meeting Mr. Hofreiter tomorrow. So I will. But would be happy to be your ambassador. And I think we all can be ambassadors, supporters, and why don't we start with the hotel right now, here and today? Very good. Entrepreneurs this year, we still have one panel of entrepreneurs. We really have 
we're really running out of time, so we can take one or two questions maximum, unfortunately. So I think Elizabeth or Michael. May I? Okay. <laughs> Just so from moving from accepting uh, guilt Question. to action, I would uh, I would support I would support the idea that we would have a skite flying at the foot of the Matterhorn next year when we meet here. <laughs> can we organize that? Uh, yeah. Yes, so yes, so yes, yes, yes. I think we can. Yes. Yeah. Well, so Matt has a so we make a proposal pro uh, <laughs> ecologic problem. So that would be a good idea. So we make a proposal to the mayor that apparently is still missing 20% of energy or 30% of energy yes. that's not coming from water. They need the kites. How many kites can we place in, in this valley in order to make it 100% self-sufficient so and energy? Not, sustainable not energy. in the valley, on, on the foot, uh, at the foot of the Matterhorn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, if you get the permits, that may be a bit uh, of a challenge. But just in the <laughs> island, just let's call the island Zermatt. And in the island Zermatt, let's get just... How many kites do you think? It's 6,000 people living here. So that... Let's start with one to, uh, <laughs> to do no, a No, no, be more ambitious. <laughs> um, 6,000 people is how many kites were you thinking of for the 6,000 people? Oh, we can uh, do a large kite, that is okay then. One kite, that does it all. <laughs> <laughs> And you said that... But, uh, 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 Gunther, don't re uh, forget that it's a combination of sustainable energy. But they have the wind yeah. energy and they have the biogas. Yeah, they have to combine. And but but this, is the, this is the advantage. Exactly. You always okay. To combine. Yeah. We, 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 I'm sorry. Sensing the, the, v the, the, the <laughs> energy from Christopher <laughs> means, Gunther, shut up. Let us go. <laughs> we have a break now. Thank you very much. And then please be back in 20 minutes. Yes, thank you.